Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning Ava. <laughs> we got Ava there in the background today, but she's still sleepy. She just woke up. Oh, now she's speaking at everybody. Where is everybody? Okay. Well, uh oh. Let's see if we can include her more in the picture. Okay, there you go. There you go. Okay. Okay, everybody. Good morning. Today is Thursday, September 12th. And uh, we are reading from the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 6, verses 27 to 38. So this is a continuation of yesterday's Gospel. What was yesterday's Gospel again? What was it all about? Oh yeah. oh yeah. What was it all about? The Beatitudes. Yeah. And the... What were we saying about... Huh? What were we saying about the Gospel yesterday? <clears throat> it's full of ironies, right? <laughs> full of ironies. And the irony of how can you be so blessed if you are suffering things, right? Well, guess what? Today... Our Lord continues with more of these ironies. Uh oh. I'm afraid we're going to get distracted from this. Okay, well, today we have more of these ironies that our Lord uh, talks about in today's gospel. But these are ironies today that have to do with how to deal with our neighbors. Okay, so remember what is the greatest commandment? Love God with all your mind, with all your heart, with all your, soul. with all your strength, with all your soul, and your neighbor as yourself, right? So loving your neighbor as yourself is, is part and parcel of the greatest commandment, the charity towards your neighbor after, of course, after love for God, okay? And so today, Jesus gives flesh to what that means. What does it mean to love your neighbor? And to what extent do you do it? Of course, he has given us the example of the Good Samaritan on the road to, uh, to, to his journey, right? And uh, similar other things. But today, our Lord gives us the hard, some of the hard and tough ways of showing that love for neighbor. Like what? Jesus said to his disciples, to you who hear, I say, love your enemies. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Eva. That's tough, right? Love your enemies. Do good. Okay. Keep it down now. Do good to those who hate you. <laughs> Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. Wow. Go to everyone, or rather, give to everyone who asks of you. Give to everyone who asks of you. You don't discriminate. You don't choose who to do charity to, who to give things to. And from the one who takes what is yours, do not demand it back. From the one who takes what is yours. Somebody who steals from you. Somebody who... <laughs> somebody who takes things without permission. Okay? Don't demand it back. And then he follows it up with a golden rule. Do to others as you would have them do unto you. Okay? Do unto others as you would have them do unto you so very tough very tough uh, measures of charity that our Lord gives us in today's gospel but you know what why is why are these things tough why is it tough to love your enemies do good to those who hate you bless those who curse you Pray for those who mistreat you. Why is it tough? Anybody knows? Uh oh. Because they're your enemies. Because what, Joe? Because they're your enemies. Because they're enemies? 
Okay. <coughs> well, maybe, mm -hmm. huh, Sophia? Um, human nature, human perspective. Sorry, I cannot understand. Human nature. Because that's human nature? Yeah, to an extent. But what is it about our human nature that makes it difficult? That makes it tough to love our neighbor in this way? Huh? I can't understand you, Mia, louder. Mm -hmm. Because we are proud? Well, yes, true. And what does that pride lead us to do? What is something more specific about us, about us, that makes it difficult to love our neighbor the way Jesus tells us here? Yeah. Was that Chevelle? I can't understand. Sorry, but you have to talk louder. Lack of love for God. Well, yeah, of course, because love for neighbor stems from love for God, right? Very good, Chevelle. Right? Love of neighbor comes from loving God, right? Okay. But there is still something more specific that that uh, somehow all the time gets in the way, gets in the way of us loving our neighbor. Huh? Okay, let me tell you. Let me tell you. You know why? You know why it's tough to love our neighbors? Because we love ourselves too much. Because we love ourselves too much. Because, because as that song, as that song, greatest love of all has it. Eh? The greatest love of all is to love yourself. That is what that song is talking about like it's so narcissistic it's so self-centered eh? the greatest love of all the greatest love of all right to love yourself wrong that is not the greatest love of all that is the most selfish love of all if you can even call it love right because that is narcissistic that is self-centered. That is selfish. When, when God said, when Jesus said, love your neighbor as yourself, it doesn't mean to say, you got to love yourself first, and then you love your neighbor. Not quite. Our Lord precisely tries to use our selfishness as our measure of how we should love our neighbor. Okay? You're right, Sophia, when it says human nature has the tendency to make us love ourselves and be selfish and be self-centered. Yeah, that's part of our broken nature. And our Lord uses that precisely as a measure of how we should love others. That's why he's saying here, instead of loving yourself and focusing on yourself and being selfish and being all self-centered, well, you turn the focus on others. Shift your focus on other people instead of yourself. Turn that love that you give yourself into loving others. And then you will be charitable. See? And then you will really live up to the commandments that I have given you of loving God, then your neighbor. And you will be able to love in a very tough way. Such as the way our Lord tells us here, love your enemies. We have plenty of people who don't like us, or at least me. <laughs> and I know that. Right? When, we, when, when, I go, when I go correcting the wrong things that, uh, that we see, for example, in our parish, uh, the wrong practices people have, the, uh, the, the, the wrong ideas that are spreading around like wildfire these days and when I make comments about them, a lot of people get affected. A lot of people hate that of me. But I do that because of love. Not because I hate them. Not because I think I'm better than everybody else. No. But that's precisely being done out of love. Because if I did not care, if I did not love, I would just keep quiet and say to hell with everybody. Right? That is, that is what selfishness looks like. When you don't care anymore about other people. 
and you just care about your own welfare. You just care about yourself. But that's not what Jesus tells us to do. And that's why we make enemies sometimes. It's because these are people who we love but who misunderstand our love for them. And then they consider us an enemy. But for us, they're not enemies. They're part of the family of God that we need to love. And that's why, even if they consider us enemies, we continue to love them. We continue to treat them well. We continue to pray for them, as Jesus tells us here. We continue to show, us our, uh, show them our concern for them. So it's tough. It is tough to love our neighbor. But it will be easier if we learn to deny ourselves of our own pleasures, of our own comfort, of our own likes, of our own preferences. right? So we need to practice here. This requires a little practice on our part. To practice how to deny ourselves. So that when the time comes that we are confronted with a situation where we need to love that neighbor and we need to give without asking anything in return and we need to sacrifice ourselves for the sake of our neighbor, then we're ready. We're ready to do it. So how do we practice self-denial? It begins with the little things of every day. And let me just teach you and give you a few tips. For example, okay, oh, let's say you like sausages so much for lunch. Or you like cheese for breakfast like we have here. Well, sometimes you can deny yourself of those things and say okay today for breakfast I'm not gonna have cheese I'm gonna have some peanut butter because I don't like peanut butter to deny yourself of things that you like or you like a particular seat in the house or a particular couch or a particular I don't know what and you give it up and give it to your sister give it to your brother and you take the floor or you take the the, the wooden chair or you take the the, the, the least comfortable uh, situation for yourself so you deny yourself of that pleasure right or you th or you can you can uh, you can deprive yourself of more mirror time right because it's so easy to be vain so easy to keep to keep looking at ourselves and enjoying oh how handsome I am how pretty I am deny yourself of more mirror time forget about your vanity then You'll learn to focus and see that other people are prettier than you. Other people are more handsome than you. And you can like them better. Oh, I hate talking to people. Oops. <laughs> well, maybe you can go out of your way to talk more. Right? Because it's a tendency that you don't, you don't like doing. Well, go out and do it more. Because that's the way you're going to build friendships. That's the way you're going to, 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 to build relationships with other people. Or, uh, oh, I, 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 I don't want taking care of the baby. Well, maybe you can volunteer more. Maybe you can give your time more to take care of the baby and stay, stick around with Ava for a while. Right? Oh, I hate, I hate uh, uh, cleaning up uh, the, the table after meals. Well, maybe you can volunteer more. Maybe you can find a little bit more uh, uh, desire inside of you to help and serve the others. So these are very little tips, right? Very little tips. So we can find this every day, all throughout the day. There's so many little things where we can exercise self-denial, where we can deprive ourselves of what we want, what we desire, the pleasures we like, the comforts we like. And that's the spirit of mortification. That's what you call mortification. To voluntarily deny yourself or deprive yourself of all of these pleasures, of all of these nice things. Doesn't mean to say you cannot enjoy any of these. Of course you can and you should. But once in a while, it's a good practice <clears throat> to deny yourselves of these things and deprive yourselves of these things because that will train you in self-denial that will train you to forget yourself and focus your attention on others focus your attention on loving others focus your attention on serving others so that when the tougher situations come 
and you have enemies that you need to love and you have to do good to people who hate you and to bless those who curse you and for and to, and to pray for those who mistreat you it will come easier it will be easier it will be a breeze because it will be second nature to you to deny yourself and you know what this is really the greatest love of all and you know how that works if you deny yourself you're loving yourself more you know why because you're drawing down graces from God that will be good for your soul and in that way you are actually feeding your soul with all the graces that you need to sanctify yourself it's a very purifying and sanctifying uh, way of living your life. And in a way, you reap the rewards of your own self-denial. And what is that reward? Heaven. And if I may be permitted, just one selfish thought and selfish desire, it would be my selfish desire of going to heaven. That's the only thing I want. And that's the only thing I would encourage you to want. Be selfish about your quest for heaven. And that kind of selfishness will lead you to deny yourself. It will lead you to mortify yourself. It will lead you to serve others. It will lead you to your own sanctity. Okay, folks. That's it for us today. Hi, Cora. I hope you're feeling better. You are in my prayers, Cora. Have a good day, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.